Oh, hello. Just uh, sending off a text message. Something that uh, we will probably cover in a minute. So, a friend of mine made a zombie preparation video, and uh, he stressed a very important point, which is cardio. Uh, sorry, by the way, Brady, if uh, I keep making videos off of your videos, it's just, just uh, I'm a huge zombie survivalist freak, so, uh, you know, I gotta cover a few more things that you didn't. Starters, Brady covered cardio. Very important cardio work, so I'm going to leave that out of the equation because uh, obviously you don't need to know. Now, uh, as he was showing in his video, he was using a lot of weapons that he uh, has collected over the years, which is excellent. Always good to have a good, steady supply of weapons. Uh, the main thing that he forgot to mention was that you have to make sure that these weapons are actually going to be useful. So, in an example, he had a sword with a big hook on the end of it. I'll give that two, three strikes at best to take out a zombie, and he'll probably have bent the fuck out of it. I liked his two-handed uh, little sword there, there but... Uh, I don't know. I suppose if one was coming at you from either end, you could go, and then they would be dead. But only if you got them in the eye. And hopefully you got the guy behind you first in the eye, and then the guy in front of you you can deal with. So. Hmm. Oh yeah, something I uh, touched on earlier about uh, the weapons my friends were using. Two, three swings at best. Um, an important thing to remember is for close range melee weapons is you need solid reusability. And in the case of a machete or if you're lucky enough a sword, try to get one with a weighted tip. Okay? Now by that I mean you'll notice there's a lot more smoother movement when you're swinging. Okay? Which will allow for a lot more force when aiming for the neck area. Okay? Straight through. Excellent thing to look for, um, a uh, Transylvanian killage, if you've ever seen Deadliest Warriors. And yes, I know I'm making a lot of television and movie references, but a lot of things that you can learn from TV and movies is survival tips, if you just keep them in mind. Now understand that in a lot of cases, movies use props. Okay. So, you need to make sure that you find items that can be readily maintained, readily sharpened, and relatively durable. You don't want to be running along and then suddenly lose your melee weapon after a couple of swings. Because then you have to resort to crap like, you know, anything that's around you. And uh, I hate to say it, but a zombie can take a full-on strong person attack from a chair or a plank or something like that because you really you need to destroy the brain cavity all right this whole area right solid up here softer back here excellent entry points is the temples and the eyes so if you do know kung fu that whole cracking in the nose thing driving the bone up inside doesn't work because you need to destroy the brain, and all that's going to do is just give it a little poke. Not a good idea. Important thing that you need to know. Zombies are not like people, in that they look like people, but unfortunately they don't have the same strengths as people. Uh, if you haven't read The Zombie Survival Guide by Max Rooks, I strongly suggest you do. I know that uh, zombies are, of course, fucking fictional, but you gotta think of them in a different context than the fictional characteristic that they represent, and look at them in more of a survival scenario. Zombies represent everything that can go wrong. Everything. So we have natural catastrophe in that we lose all connection with what we consider the illusion of safety, right? We lose our power grid. We lose pretty much in the tier of things that are important, shelter being one of them, food, water, shelter, necessary for survival. We lose all of them. We lose the security of all of them. We have to scrounge for all of them because in some cases, or in most cases, especially if it's a level four zombie emergency, which is global, 
there's no readily available safe source to hunker down in. Unless you're one of those really, really paranoid rich people that has, like, a giant bunker, you're pretty well screwed. And so are they sometimes. Uh, if you've read the Zombie Survival Guide or World War Z, you would get a really great example of that. So, let's go a little bit something about physical characteristics of zombies. Um, one thing that we need to remember is that we have to wear tight-fitting clothing. Tight-fitting clothing because when a human being grabs hold of you, you've been solid like that, it's <sighs> nice, you know, like this, their sh hold is dependent upon their physical endurance, okay? So I, I can hold on to somebody. If somebody's struggling, 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 and it's going to be how long I can keep my grip, right? And in most cases, you know, somebody will be punching me in the face or whatever, depending on where I have them. And it's going to distract me, and eventually, uh, you know, let go. You can punch a zombie in the face all you want. He's not going to let go, okay? Once he has hold of you, he stays hold of you. Unless you can sever this limb off, all right? Because they have no limitations, physically, of uh, their endurance. So, tight-fitting clothing, uh, as my friend pointed out, cardio, very important. Uh, I'm not entirely with his desire to live in an apartment building and bar off the stairwells. That works in theory, but you got to remember that people were living in that apartment building and <laughs> more than likely a lot of them have been turned. So the whole process of clearing out an apartment building is probably going to be very, very taxing. One thing you should always do is when you're out and about, constantly keep, you know, surveying the area around you for excellent places to defend against an oncoming horde. All right? So, in my case, I live near a Home Depot, a grocery store, and fortunately a liquor store. All right? And a college. The important thing about a college is they have a lot of equipment that can prove useful in the future. On top of that, I Having access to emergency medical supplies is usually very important as well because any standard survival kit has, you know, something in case of an emergency. But if anything, like if you've watched the movie uh, The Day After Tomorrow, um, a girl cut herself on something metal, d started to develop tetanus, I believe, and she needed penicillin. You won't find penicillin in an emergency kit unless you're really smart and put some in yourself. Sorry. Also, I live near and work at a uh, hunting and camping store, which would come in very handy because we have a readily available supply of, uh, well, guns, hunting, ammunition, freeze-dried food, and capability to store water and purify water, which is something that's very important. Uh, my friend touched on the fact that you need a readily available supply of food and water, but you only covered food. Bad. Water goes stagnant. Okay. It's prominent in nature. Mosquitoes actually breed in stagnant water, and if we learn anything about mosquitoes, what if they go and bite a zombie? and then they fly off and bite you. Method transfer, perhaps? Also, it's just a good idea not to get bitten by mosquitoes. They have Lyme disease. Just kidding. That's flies. So, water purification is very important. Water storage. In an apartment building, if you've ever watched the movie, say, 28 Days Later, there was a couple of father and daughter trying to survive in a flat, and they thought that they could survive off of the water in each of the flats. But unfortunately, like I said, water goes stagnant, and it wastes very quickly. If you are growing vegetables on a balcony, they're going to require water. Um, you can't rely on the weather, you know? 
like they did in that movie. They had a whole bunch of buckets out on the roof waiting for rain. Tasty rainwater. Delicious. No. So, you need to keep readily available supply of water. Um, if you have the luxury of discovering that a zombie apocalypse is upon us, if you have a properly sanitized tub, I recommend you automatically go to all the places in your house that you can store water for a short period of time and just fill them to the max. Doesn't matter if it's hot or cold. In an emergency situation, you're not going to be wanting a glass of ice water. You're just wanting a glass of water. Now, another thing, cell phones. Cell phones and all technology, so you won't be able to watch this video if a zombie level 4 apocalypse happens. Do not call for help on this phone. It will not help you. We will lose all communication. And it's likely the power will go out. The power won't go out right away in most cases. Anytime you've ever experienced a brownout, you'll notice flickering lights gone. But we do store power. There's also nuclear power. If you are in an area with a nuclear reactor, uh, if anything that we've learned from the recent earthquakes in Japan, you need to get the fuck away from a nuclear reactor. The greatest technology as far as power generation is concerned, unfortunately, if it's not well maintained or if it suffers a disaster like this, you'll all notice that we have radiation spitting in the air. And what do zombies represent? They represent a biological threat, a cataclysmic threat. Um, in this case, wiping out species altogether. Uh, once they're done feeding on people, which they for some reason prefer, they will turn to the animals and basically eat anything, you know. And there's no limit to their capacity of eating either. They'll eat and eat and eat until their stomachs explode. And then they will keep eating. So you have to look at them more as an unrelenting, unstoppable, devouring force that is out to destroy everything. Now, perhaps I'll touch a little bit more on a few subjects in related notes. There are a lot of things to consider in the zombie apocalypse. So, uh, I hope you found this a little bit informative, and uh, I strongly recommend The Zombie Survival Guide by Max Brooks. Excellent book. If not anything entertaining, uh, and then the follow-up World War Z, which is uh, even more entertaining and really, really interesting as far as his idea of how the world dealt with a disaster such as this. And uh, that's really what uh, writing friction is all about. Uh, friction. Fiction. I seem to have trouble with word on camera. And I'm not chewing gum this time. Nope. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and uh, check out my friend's video as well about his uh, preparation. He does cover cardio quite well. And he has an excellent plethora of weapons. Thanks for watching.